Welcome to the Marketing for the Culture podcast, powered by the African American Marketing Association. Each week, we'll bring you an insightful conversation from some of the best experts in our industry on how to advance our career. Join the collective of Black marketers across the world, advancing their brand as we work towards creating a collaborative community. Hey, good people. Welcome to the Marketing for the Culture podcast. I am your host, Michelle Gomez. And today's special guest is Oliver Banks of Oliver Banks Art. And I am so excited to have him on the show. Um, we are Instagram friends, been following each other for some time. And I'm just super impressed because he is an illustrator or an animator. Uh, so I think this is a new twist to marketing. So I'm really excited to dive into this topic. Oliver, how are you doing today? I am pretty good. And uh, thank you for inviting me to the podcast. And also uh, thank you listeners. And thank you everybody who yeah. likes my work. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Okay, uh, my name is Oliver Banks. Uh, I am the creator of Art Monkey Animation, uh, which is a Houston-based uh, 2D animated company. Um, I started off as an illustrator. Um, I would go back and forth to uh, different conventions within Texas, and then I branched out and started going to like New York Comic Con, C2E2, uh, uh, the San Diego Comic Con, and so. Uh, uh, from there, like my animation company was like a natural progression from illustration. And so I've been doing that since 2017. All right. So help me out here. OK, I need your help. So what's the difference between illustration and animation? OK, the difference between illustration and animation is uh, illustration is just uh, a portrait, uh, any type of picture, just a, a still, basically. But animation is something that moves. It's, it's the same thing, but it moves. It's in action. Uh, it's telling a story, basically, um, with with action. I mean, because a still can tell a story at the same time, too. But uh, but animation is more of a, a movement medium, uh, closer to film. And something else you said, um, I guess, what's the difference between 2D and 3D? Okay, uh, 2D is basically the traditional animated style uh, where they used to kind of, yeah, everybody knows the little flip book technique to where uh, you draw one picture, then you draw it on the next page and then you flip. And so that's basically a 2D rendering type of uh, style that, uh, that Disney is known for uh, starting off with. But now uh, 3D is uh, what Pixar is known for. Mm -hmm. And so Pixar has the more, you know, uh, lifelike uh, characters and animation and stuff like that. So the difference is the 80s and 90s Disney versus the Pixar, you know, the 2000s Pixar. So uh, that will be 2D and then the Pixar will be 3D. Okay, very cool. So I guess, is it safe to assume that you've always been a good drawer? Uh, yes. Uh <laughs> I started, and as far as I can remember, I know the age of five. So the, around the age of five, I started uh, drawing drawing well, even before I could write my name. Mm -hmm. And so it's like one of those things to where, you know, that was my first experience. And I got that from uh, comic books and, and cartoons. And so I never really understood, like, what I was doing as I was drawing. But I knew that it was the way to express myself. And it was an easy way to do it, you know, because I didn't, like I said, I, I was doing that before I was writing my alphabets. And so um, as far as as far as back as that, um, I can remember actually uh, being entered in contests around, I say, between the age of six to 10 and winning different contests, uh, drawing contests, especially like the the Houston Rodeo and like stuff like that. I actually won one year and they, uh, they, the prize was like making me like an honorary fireman or something like that. I got the trophy and stuff like that. I never really cashed that in. Maybe I should have, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it was, it was pretty cool. Like I would say, um, I, I was being validated as an artist by winning those trophies, but no one ever really just said, Oh yeah, you can do this for a living. 
you know, it was it was always pushed as this is a nice hobby that you have. And then that's it. Now do something else. Yeah. 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 And I definitely want to unpack that. Like, that's why I'm so intrigued by you. And and it's, so it's a lot in my head. Right. So one. No one, what I do love about social media is just the exposure that kids, teenagers, and even college students have at this age because we didn't have it or I didn't have that, you know, 20 years ago when I was starting college. It was just, it was pretty much, you know, office, professor, medical field. Like you didn't know how these industries really operated or especially as a creative. And then, uh, the second thing I think about is like part of it's like shout out to your parents, right? For just nurturing that talent, allowing you to enter the contest, you know, just allowing you to obviously as a child, I guess it is a hobby. It is a passion, but I am curious on what was the pivotal change that allowed you to explore this as a career or a full-time career? Uh, well, it, it wasn't so much as, as like being pushed because uh, the reason, honestly, the reason that I did enter those contests is because I entered them, you know, okay. uh, my, my parents, I, I'll give them the credit with this. Whatever I asked, well, well, especially my mom, whatever I asked her or wherever I told her, hey, I got this thing I'm doing, she was down for it. But because the lack of knowledge she didn't really, she wasn't, she was supportive in, okay, let me do this thing for my son. But it wasn't, okay, let me make sure my son does this for a living. Gotcha. You know what I mean? It was almost like, uh, it, like, like their kid taking their kid to sports. You know, they don't, they don't think they're going to go to the NFL, but they just, you know, he, he wants to do it. You know, it's something that he wants to do. And so, um, I honestly went a long period of time of, it just being a hobby. Um, it, it wasn't until I got, you know, as an adult uh, to where I was like, well, let me pursue this for a living. And um, I actually was working at a, a at a, it was like a warehouse environment uh, uh, for a company. Uh, they, they build these uh, pieces for oil rigs to drill. And um, I was just working and working and working and, and something just told me one day, um, I should be doing my art for a living. And, it, and as crazy as it sounds, I just started breaking it down. It wasn't like a, a on a whim type thing. It was on a thing to where I realized that art is everything. Like, it's actually everything. Like, we wouldn't have logos. We wouldn't have TV shows. We wouldn't have, you know, a lot of things, billboards, like the clothing, <laughs> you mm. know, it's it's pretty much everything, but it's the most disregarded <laughs> um i guess option because it seems it, it they have that saying out there you know the starving artists you know mm -hmm. starving artists, artists don't make money but there's millions well not millions but there's a couple of thousand artists out there that's making millions off of their paintings you know or if if you don't want to go to fine art route right, uh making money off of doing commercials or doing documentaries or doing animated features or, you know, it's, it's so many avenues that, that we could go in as being artists, but it's often shunned, you know, to the point to where it is just, it's delegated to just being a hype. And that's going to come up a lot in my speech because that's all it was ever told to me, you know, is that yeah, it's just a hype. And so uh, as I, you know, worked, I actually made a plan and I said, you know what, I give myself two years and it, and it was, it was weird, you know, but I stuck to it. I was like, I'm giving myself two years, two years to build, two years to see if I can, you know, kind of launch myself off, off this launching pad. And, uh, it, it worked for me. You know, I, uh, went to, uh, one of my first comic cons in, I think it was like 2012. And, uh, I never had been the one honestly didn't even know that there were any in Texas. <laughs> you know, I thought it was just something that was on TV, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I went to Arlington. I remember I went to Arlington and uh, there was one there and it was called Wizard World. And so I went and um, I spoke with 
which I didn't I didn't know at the time. But uh, this guy, he was like a major figure in comics. Uh, his name is George Perez. He died uh, recently of uh, cancer. But um, I was talking to him across the table and I was asking questions and I was saying, what can I do, you know, to kind of get in your position, not knowing that he was working for, for Marvel in D.C. And, like, you know, like, nah, I, I didn't know that. But then I got to talking to him more and he was telling me all this. I was like, well, that was a stupid question. But he was like, no, uh, you can you can be here. You know, he was like, all you got to do is just buy a tape. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, yeah, just buy a table, put your art together and, you know, sell your art. And I was like, is that simple? You know, and he was like, yeah. And these conventions are everywhere and they're for, for everyone, no matter if you're working for Marvel or you're just an illustrator off the street. And I was like, man, you know, so that that gave me that spark as I was working, you know, my, my nine to five to be like, man, you know, I can be doing my art, but I'm building this company. I could be building myself, but I'm building somebody else and they can let me go at any point. But if I'm working for myself, I have the opportunity to build myself to something. And then if I fail, then at least I can say I try, you know, because I'm on, I'm going to reach 50 anyway. But if I reach 50 as my own, you know, owning my own business and, and doing what I love, then it's, it's, it's going to, you know, it's going to be benefit me, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Have you been in Houston the whole time? Like yes. born and raised? Born and raised. So has there ever been that moment where you feel like you needed a move to grow your career? Yes. Like- um, um, when I, when I first started and, uh, I was just, uh, stuck going to the different, um, uh, Comic Cons in Houston, um, everybody would say, well, you need to move to California, you know, go to Burbank, you know, the Burbank, if people don't know, Burbank is like the area where, you know, like Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, like all of these big time animation studios are in that area. And uh, this was, this was, I I would always be told this, but I wasn't really just thinking about, well, I'm going to do animation, you know. I was always just illustrated. And uh I and I would ask questions and say, uh, you know, how could I get to this point? This is this this point at that point. Some people were like, well, you need to go to Cal Arts and you know, you know, try your try your luck going to school and and paying like forty thousand dollar tuition to and I'm like, I don't even have a car. Like, like like I can't pay forty thousand dollars for a car, like let alone pay for you know education. And so uh yeah, going to like t- telling me to go to California, go to New York, uh, go anywhere but Houston or Texas was like a big thing. It was huge. What grounded me uh, in 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 staying and wanted to be here, and now you see everybody's coming here, right? <laughs> and so I, I'm glad I stayed. And so, uh, but like what what grounded me to stay here was. Um, uh, was I uh, I uh, tried to book a job. I'm sorry. I, my, my mind was going to race. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was booking a job uh, to do car- caricature work. And while I was doing this car- caricature work, um, a company had approached me and they was like, well, uh, we you, you draw real, very good, you know, but we wanted to see if if you knew someone or if you could do any animation. And so uh, they was like, yeah, we need some animated commercials. And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Whatever you need, uh, just get in touch with me. Here's my information, whatever. I have no idea how to do animation. I have never been taught animation, never was trained in animation. I remember when I was younger, I used to uh, take a piece of paper and put it on, like I used to pause the, the VCR VCR, you know, I'm telling my age, man. I used to pause the VCR and then put the put the the paper on the picture and it made it like made the the picture shine through so I can trace, you know, the characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I would do is like if you press the pause button, it can kind of move, 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 you know, slowly, like yeah, yeah, yeah. frame by frame. And I used to do that and then make my little flip books or whatever. And people just like, how did you do that? You know, I'm like, uh, but I traced, you know, but 
still, you know, it was something that I used to do. So that was my, that was the, the, the. That's clever. You could say of my, my animation teaching. <laughs> like, That's nobody, really clever. But yeah. Nobody ever taught me that, but I just thought about, it. I wanted to know how it worked, you know, and cause cartoons around that time, it was like, um, DuckTales and, and, uh, you know, uh, what was the other ones? Like Darkwing Duck and like, you know, stuff like that. It, it was it just mesmerizing. Like I was like trying to figure out how these things work. And that's where I went from that to doing that. And so by them asking me that, I was like, you know what? I'll ask for forgiveness later. <laughs> like, you know, I'll just say yes and then just try to figure this out. And so they was like, well, we will. The, the project is like we, we need it in two weeks. <laughs> we need two separate commercials. I was like, oh my God, what did I give myself? <laughs> like, this was like terrible. Like, I, I was like, it was the worst case scenario. I thought it was just going to be like, yeah, we, you have a couple of months and stuff like that. But me knowing animation, but not really dealing with it, I know that it takes way longer than two weeks. And so I was, man, I was frightened. But they gave me the gist of what they wanted in it. And man, I pulled it off. Like I, I, I did a whole, whole animated sequence. Um, uh, and I, well, this is what I did. They had two products that they wanted to sell. I, I put it all in one, uh, animated thing commercial, and then I chopped it up mm. and made it two. And so, uh, from there, I, I sent this to them. They was like, "Oh yeah, this is amazing. This is amazing." And when, uh. They were, they were like, uh, I was like, well, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to conventions. I'm used to making like, I'd say on a good weekend, I'd make like probably like $2,000 or something like that, which is good. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, d- especially depending on, you don't really know what people want. So you just draw what you feel like people want. And then they come to your table and, okay, I want that. Boom. So on a model of, Maybe they might want it. Two thousand is pretty good. So um, I didn't really understand or know the price range of what you know to to that that they were going to pay. But their marketing people knew, and so they was like, "Okay, well, we're going to give you this," and it was like fifteen thousand dollars just for that one commercial. And I was like, "What?" <laughs> I, I tried to play it. I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah, that's." That's what I was going to tell you how much it was, you know. <laughs> and I, man, I was I, I was hooked after that. <laughs> I was like, really, okay. And and I did this in two weeks, and it came out pretty good. I, I wish I could show you right now the commercial, but I, it, I'll show you another time. But yeah. it, it came out really good. I I, I also like like I didn't because they was like, well, we need this voiceover person. We need we needed to be edited. And I'm like, I don't, man. So I went and I, I found this, this uh, voiceover person. They voiced over the, the commercial. It was professional. like, and, and I edited it all. I put it in like a program. I didn't know what I was doing. I edited it. I was like, man, this thing is professional. I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, you came to the right person. And so after that, I just, I was like, okay, this is going to be a thing. You know, I was like, I, I, I just knew it would. And so I, I sat down and I said, okay, I need to create my company name. I need to, you know, be serious about this, you know, at this point. And it, it just, everything just kind of took off from there. I can, I can keep talking from there or, or you can ask me another question. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. ahead. From there, um, uh, a company uh, from, Called, it was called Foo Fi Studios uh, out of the UK. Um, saw the commercial, and I was wondering, like, well, who, who? Because uh, the commercial was for an energy company, and so I guess it just was kind of worldwide. And so the somebody from the UK saw it, and they was like, okay, well, I want to see who this person is that did this. And so he uh, messaged me on on Instagram, and he was like, uh, I'm going to be in Austin. Uh, for a couple of days, I'd like to meet you. And I was like, well, I'm in Houston. I'm, you know, it's a lot of, and if you are artists on Instagram, 
your DMs are full of rappers who want music videos. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And people and people telling you, draw me, draw me, draw me and without yeah. like any type of monetary, you know, thing that they think they have to pay. And so I'm like, uh, I nah, I, I think I'll stay in Houston. He was like, trust me, you you want to come and meet me or whatever. And so uh I was like, okay. So I got a lot more information from him and I saw that his company was based out of out of the UK and uh he's based in Florida and the UK. And uh, he was just visiting Austin. So I, I drove two hours down to Austin from Houston and we had we had a chat. You know, we talked and he was like, well, I'm doing documentaries and I want uh, you, I love your style, you know, and I want you to be able to do that. I, was, I thought he wanted commercials, you know. Mm-hmm. He wanted to do documentaries. And the first documentary uh, that I did with him is called uh, uh, Choose Yourself. James Altucher, uh, the James Altucher. Yeah, story. yeah, and I did. I actually did the animation for that that uh, that documentary. I didn't know he had one. Yeah, it's on Amazon right now. Okay, I used to follow James Altucher a lot a couple of years yeah. ago and listen to his podcast. I read some of his books. Yeah. Okay, I, I read that particular book. Choose yourself. I didn't yeah. know there was a doc. Okay, I'm gonna have to check that out. Yeah, the the and I, I can uh I can send you some stuff on on that as well. The the, the animation and the it, like the character of him, I I did everything. The character oh my design, gosh. the animation, all of that, and um and that was my first movie. <laughs> and is that the one you won an Emmy for? Or no, yeah. the, the the one that I won an Emmy for, I did another one with with the food fight. And it was called Dreamer. And that one, that one won the Emmy. And by proxy, you know, because of my animation, I, I won. So very cool. And is that a documentary as well? Yeah. And that one is on uh, I think that one is on Amazon as well, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, it has, uh, you you if you ever watch the commercial, it has the Virgin Mobile guy in it. Uh I don't know if you know who that is, but it has him in uh the, he um He's the like the millionaire dude. He's a billionaire. I think he flies the planes and yeah, yeah. You know, um, Richard Branson. Richard Branson. Yeah, I couldn't think of his name, but it has him in it and a few other people. Okay. Like that, so. Yeah. Okay. But, um, but yeah, not yeah, man. It 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 like after that, like after that one commercial, it just kind of started going up and up, you know. And uh, so far, uh, yeah, it's been looking good, you know. Okay, so I have I have several questions. Okay, no problem. Um, one, because you mentioned the marketing team earlier, right? And so with these different projects, I guess it's like I'm very curious on how do you communicate and work with, I guess, a marketing team when it comes to your work. Um, as in, as if, uh, oh. Well, it's it's always like a oh, as in like like physically, like what do I use, what I use to communicate with them, or how or how is it set up? I guess how because I I guess I'm thinking yeah. as a strategist, I'm thinking yeah. okay, what's the plan? Okay, we have this marketing plan, this marketing mm-hmm. campaign, and then I'm like okay, let's do animation, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess the process of contacting you, you working with the marketing team. I'm just very curious because I don't, I don't think people as a marketer is very rare that I think about animation. Right. Right. And it could be a budget thing, um, you know, a a growing business versus a corporation and resources. But I I guess I'm curious as a marketer, I'm curious when that light bulb comes on, this is the campaign. Let's reach out to you. Yeah, uh, I think the I, I can use uh, the energy energy company for an example. They were looking at like the trends and stuff like that with across the social media, and so they kind of was like, "Man, these short, you know, spurts of of animation or you know, marketing animated videos were at the time were doing like big numbers, you know, and 
people would replay them and replay them over and over again. And they were like, well, instead of doing this for network TV, let's do it for like a mm -hmm. social media campaign. And they just came to me and they was like, yeah, it, this is going to be on social media. We're going to spread it across. And from what I know, you know, they did really well with those commercials. So good. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm curious about. Yeah. Um, the second thing is. What kind of software do you use and how important is technology in order for you to maintain your craft? I like that question. <laughs> That's a great question. Technology is not important at all. Like it is it, is just it's just not. Now, if you uh want certain, I would say if you want certain uh, you know, responses, it may be important. Um if if technology is important to move with the times, but it's 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 not everything, you know. There are some still some artists today that are doing the whole flip thing, like the old Disney flip thing, and still making their animations that way. And I mean, and the biggest thing they do is probably get some young kid to upload it, you know, <laughs> upload it to you know the 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 internet or whatever, but. It's just about the the work ethic and the know how, and it, it, it's it's just a tool. It's it's about as it, it's about as important as a pencil in your hand. You know, it just it's just what you do with it and how you use it. That's that's basically what it is. Because a lot of a lot of kids, and I get this question a lot because a lot of kids come to me and like, "What kind of tablet should I get? You know, what kind of tablet should I get?" I'm like, well, "Do you draw on paper? You know." No, no, I don't draw. I'm like, well, what you gonna, what you think you're gonna do when you get a tablet? <laughs> you, you're not, you know, you're not gonna. It's, it's not gonna advance. You're not gonna jump to my level just by, you know, getting a tablet like I'm, like I got. One, you know, um, uh, the I made those. I made those. The, I made that first commercial just on an iPad, just, just on a regular software. Nothing fancy it wasn't even photoshop it was just a regular regular pad i uh, used the editing software and then i used uh i used like different uh i i, th I don't think I, I don't even think i used after effects on it yeah it was just a flat you know nothing special about the the equipment it was just the know-how and the the problem solving because when the less you have the more problem solving you have. So it's just like, I have mm -hmm. to figure out how to do this because you will, you'll will probably have one program, like one program that like is industry, industry standard is Toon Boom. Like every um, animation company probably uses it. And it's, it's loaded with things that you need, you know, like from start to finish. But if you only have, you know, something like Procreate, I don't know if you ever heard of that. It's a it's a drawing app that's pretty big on on Apple. If you just have that, and you use what like the 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 everything that it it offers, and you need a little bit extra, go and get a uh, a editing software, or go and get like you just pull different things to kind of make or do what you need done, and it'll still look just as good if you don't cut any corners. So mm -hmm. to me. Technology is not that big of a deal, but if you can afford it and you can get, you know, what, whatever you need, because those programs are like three thousand dollars and you know five thousand dollars and stuff like that. Because one thing that I know is anything they they might say that oh you're gonna be a starving artist and this and that, but people know that art is everything because they charge like like a, a famous pair of markers are called Copic markers. And a lot of like traditional artists, they, you know, color with these markers. There are six markers in that 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 bunch that cost almost like 60 bucks just for six markers. Mm -hmm. And so it's like the art community is being charged because they know that there's a business behind it. It's a it's a, a full blown business. You can make money. And so somebody knows that artists can make money. 
<laughs> and it's either these corporations or, or something because they're charging an arm and a leg for these uh, art apps, for these, you know, these iPads and, you know, all of these things that you can actually grow a business with. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting point. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So next, how important is it to have a portfolio? You know, we see and hear about it all the time with graphic designers and even web designers. Does the same hold true for yourself? Yes. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very important to have a portfolio because you want to be ready uh, when anybody it's, it's like it's like now, uh, like a lot of people want to get discovered, you know, whether it be, you know, a singer or a rapper or, you know, entertainer or anything like that. But if you don't have the workflow that it, mm-hmm. it, it may sound counterintuitive, but if you don't have the work, to get the work, then you're not going to get the work. <laughs> and so it's, it's kind of like, you know, I, I kind of like Shark Tank because it kind of gives you that upfront because they like Shark Tank, they come in and they say, well, I got this product. I want you to invest in. It. Well, how much did you sell? That's, that's the first thing they say. How much have you sold before coming to me? And the ones that sell like, that have sold like a millions and, and like, you know, a whole lot of product, they sit up. And they're like, okay, so you, you're <laughs> selling. See, and so it's like you want to see the work before they they want to see the work before you make them work, you know. And it's kind of one of those things. And so if you have a portfolio, it's best to have that on deck ready. Like with me being an animation company, I might not have the titles um uh, already uh to uh made and ready to go, but I have titles. I have uh, logos. I have character designs. I have images. You know, I have all of these things. So if I go and pitch, all I got to do is put it up on, on the monitor. And so, okay, this is what you're getting, or this is what you might get, you know. And so having all of that is is a must, I feel like. It's, it's, a, it's a must because just telling somebody an idea, you're asking them to picture it themselves. And they might not be as creative as you, or they might not understand the idea like you do. And so you're going to try to convince them of words rather than visuals. And we are visual people. So that is best to to have all of that, your, your portfolio up and ready to go, especially if you want to get with these big name companies, because that's all they do is they don't just take your word for it, <laughs> that yeah. you're a good artist. They, they want to see what you have. Yeah, that's really good. I think from at least from what I'm getting is, even if you don't have the work, you got to take some initiative, right? Yeah. So if you're really a designer, start designing, create right. something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and and try to sell it. Yeah, you know, try to sell it. See, see if it, see if anybody's interested, because that's the biggest thing. It's like you can say that you have a product that everybody wants, but if they don't want it, you know, it it, it, it doesn't mean anything. And so if 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 you you know have this and you you design it and you put it out there and you say, hey, I made I sold like three of these, four or five of these last week. That's something to go on if you're you're trying to you know get a job with somebody that does that type of thing. So yeah. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I actually don't have any more questions, but I am yeah. curious. Is there anything else? that we just need to know, I guess, yeah. one, speaking to other animators and creatives, and then two, um, speaking as a marketer that may eventually want to hire an animator. So, Okay. Uh, well, I, I would say, um, you know, because a lot of people talk about, you know, belief, belief in yourself and, and things of that sort. You know, there's always a door that can be open. You know, whether whether you create it yourself or somebody, you know, opens it for you. Like early in early in my my animation career, it may seem like it was real short. I jumped from the commercial to movies to, you know, stuff like that. But but I really was trying I was trying to get with Nickelodeon. I was trying to get with, you know, Cartoon Network mm-hmm. and all of those rejected me, you know, uh, or I was trying to get with HBO Max right before the, the pandemic. 
Um, and I was close, but what ended up happening, they changed regimes and mm -hmm. Discovery came in and bought. And so that program that they had was kind of frivolous to them. And so they just got rid of it all, which it makes sense, but because they were spending a lot of money on things that really didn't, but I felt like they should have kept the Black People Initiative. You know, mm -hmm. keep that. Don't get rid of everything else, you know, and keep that just... Don't get me minority. started on that. But yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like, man, come on. Like, don't don't let us be the chopping block first. So, but that that kind of stopped. Man, I, I honestly, I thought that was going to be the, the thing. But, um, I mean, it, it's funny. Like, I got that, you know, that Emmy or whatever, or the 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 title, and I'm still kind of like it, it, like the HBO Max thing would have been like the validation. <laughs> like, I, but I don't want that to be that anymore. Like, I, I really want whatever I create or come up myself or c whatever comes out of Art Monkey Animation. Now, I want that to be the validation in the end. You know, because um, just. I think you'll get more out of, because I have like a lot of friends that I talk to and one of the guys is a guy that worked for Disney. And he was like, he, he, on, and I don't want to be like a, a downer for anybody who wants to work for them, but he was like, he wasn't fulfilled. You know, he was doing all of these projects, you know, and it was for Disney, but he wanted to do his own thing. You know, he wanted to create his own characters. He wanted to get his own and he, he, he was a, a African American man, and so it's like we don't get to be put in the director's chair often in those companies. So his ideas won't be heard, and mm -hmm. so he he uh, left, and now he's like way bigger than mm -hmm. what he would have been. And you know, uh, I don't know if you ever seen seen his work on Instagram. I, I just want to shout him out anyway. Uh, his name is Mel uh, Milton. Mel Mel Milton. And uh, if you go to his page, his art is amazing, very amazing. And uh, he he always counsels me, and he's like, "Man, what you're doing, it do it. You know, don't even think about it. Just just do the work that you're doing. And consistency is key. Consistency, just be consistent, and and always work hard. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. I know a lot of people probably don't know." who or what Art Monkey Animation is, but I'm pretty sure that sometime soon it, it'll it'll be known. <laughs> um, uh, the, the biggest thing that I'm working on, I, I do have like 10 animated titles that I have character designs and um, story scripts and all of that for, but currently what I'm working on is uh, something called uh, he, uh, well, it's, it's a, a He-Man project, but it's called uh, Hero Corps messages to the youth, hmm. and where this came out, where this came about uh, is, uh, it was a cosplayer who dressed up as He Man, and he was he uh, he got uh, real popular in for, for San Diego Comic Con. He got real popular. He knew me as a, as an artist, and so we kind of got together because he had, had got this story from this this uh, this uh, young uh, black mother. And her kids were, were saying that the kids at school was teasing them because they liked the cosplayer and they was like, see, there's a black, it's a, there is a black key man, you know, but they were, the kids were like, no, he doesn't have a cartoon. So that's not a, that's no thing, no such thing as a black key man. And so they came to the mom and complained to the mom and she complained to the cosplayer <laughs> and he came to me and was like, Hey, we need to make a cartoon, you know, for these kids. So it can show people that we are relevant, you know, and we can have black superheroes. And so uh, we we decided to um, do it as the old school. I don't know if you know, but the He Man PSAs, like where he's uh, at the end of the show, he'll say, "Well, kids, you know, obey your parents, or mm -hmm. kids, you know, don't do drugs, whatever." Well, we decided to do that for the we we just call him He Man, but he's the Black He Man. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, and so we decided to do that for him. And so we created an intro, a card. Well, first we did a Kickstarter, and 
we just wanted what a thousand dollars for for um each PSA, and that would that would be like the the ground level of because everything's going to look like the old school you know cartoon but up to date, and so we were we budgeted it at that, but it raised twenty thousand. And so, yeah, at the towards the end, it raised twenty thousand because we put in a, a factor to where, if you put in a thousand, you can actually be a character. And so, it was a lot of people wanted to be a, a animated character, and so they kind of put in, and it was it was a lot of people that chose to do it. And so, I uh, created the character designs, and then I went from doing a character design to creating the storyboard. Then I did storyboard, and then created the intro, the cartoon intro. That uh, that I, I'll send that to you as well if you haven't seen that. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, and and now uh, I'm working on the first PSA now, and it's it's pretty much telling young black kids that you can be a hero. You know, you can be a superhero. You can be a you know you can look up to uh, uh, characters and you have cartoons that you can look at and all that. And so that that will be the first PSA, and that's what I'm currently working. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh my God. I've, I've learned so much from you this afternoon. Um, how can people find you? How can people connect with you? Uh, you can connect with me on Instagram. Uh, I do have a YouTube channel that I am currently trying to stick with doing things (laughs) on, but animation takes so long. So I just try to do a speed video here and there or, uh, uh kind of like a study video sometimes if if I have a subject that I'm interested in to, to teach people. Um, uh, so the YouTube is uh, Art Monkey Animation and my Instagram is Oliver Banks Art. Um, my Twitter, my Twitter is horrible as well. <laughs> my, Facebook, my Facebook is horrible as well. So it, it, uh, but it's all under the same name, either Oliver Banks Art or Art Monkey Animation. So all right. We'll definitely have those links in the show notes. Um, once again, Oliver, thank you for being on the show and lining us with your talent. Um, yeah, just I just feel like it's other things we need to learn. Like everything doesn't need to be digital marketing slash graphic design per se. There's other things out there. And I think even if you're not an animator, I just love your story, right? Your story of how to transition um, into a full-time business. And that alone, I know someone will be inspired and showing up, being visible, um, doing good work, figuring out. There's so many lessons in your story. So thank you for sharing that with me today. I appreciate you for having me on and, and I'd love to do it again anytime. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good people. As always, thank you for tuning in to the Marketing for the Culture podcast. Thank you for listening to Marketing for the Culture podcast. If you haven't already, please subscribe, whether it's on Apple, Google, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform. And of course, our videos are on YouTube. If you have a moment, feel free to give us a rate, review, or just comment. We appreciate our sponsors for their continuous support. Also, if you're interested in learning more about our sponsors or becoming a member of the African-American Marketing Association, visit aa-ma.org.